Today's gonna be a really fun day. We're gonna be trying and experimenting with something new that's getting very popular in the automotive industry. Now, if you're new to the 3D printing game when it comes to automotive, it's blowing up right now and we're gonna try to get ahead of the curve. There's gonna be growing pains. We're gonna be spending money on a bunch of revisions, renditions of the products that we're gonna be making. And I want you guys to follow along for the ride. So today is step one. We need to properly scan the car and in my garage, being that I'm a professional filmmaker, I have some really good lighting. I mean, this is filled with lights. We got a big light up here. So essentially, we need good light to be able to spray this solution down and track the fenders because we're gonna start with over fenders. Now, if you guys are interested, if you've been doing this already, let me know in the comments below. So I want you guys to follow along for the growing pains. This is gonna be a lot of trial, a lot of error. We might even give up, who knows? So stay tuned. My boy's about to pull up with his buddy. We're gonna get this garage dialed lit properly. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you the process of the scan for this part one. In the next part, we'll go over the 3D designs. Now, I don't know what program he's gonna be designing in. I'd assume it's CAD or something like that. So yeah, we're just gonna go over how we're doing this today. And like I mentioned, there may be growing pain. There's definitely gonna be growing pains. Let's be real. So let's wait for BJ to pull up. We'll pull the 370 drift car in here that he's been building. Yeah, let's see where BJ's at and then we'll start creating. So the boys are here, we got James and BJ. We're gonna be setting up, what, tracking markers essentially right now for the scan? Yes, right now what I wanna do is kind of mask off how far I want to scan. Got it. So on the seams, that way it, I just have something very clear that's gonna pick up like, all right, hey, here's where you're done. This is all we need. Perfect. Such a cool process. And bro. then we'll put markers on it, which will help it pick it up because on very flat reflective surfaces, scanners are just like, hey, what am I looking at? <laughs> I bet, I bet. So the more we can help it tell it what we want to pick up, the easier it's gonna be. Hell yeah. Unfortunately, so this scanner, most scanners, and when they start out, we're using LiDAR, you know, the yep. same thing the police use. But I actually have autofocus systems that use LiDAR for the cinema lenses. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Pretty crazy now how they're getting into the LiDAR. So this one isn't LiDAR because okay. it didn't cost $10,000. <laughs> because as much as I want to do this, proof of concept, I want to. Of course. Also, you'd, it's not really necessary for cars. This scanner was kind of designed to pick up large surfaces that just have subtle variations in it. Okay. So something like a car is kind of what this scanner was designed for. Yeah, I know there's just constantly, like, I don't know what scanner Tyler is using, but he got sent that one and it's like specific for automotive and whatnot yeah. too. Yep. All right, so the first thing they're doing is wiping down the surface for the tracker. You wanna have a clean, clean surface so that you don't pick up anything essentially with the scan. It's real. it's just the more you can do to help it. It's, we may not even have to spray. Hopefully we won't have to spray because it's already a white surface and See, this is a soft box. This is what I was talking about. Yeah. Absolutely. First thing I ask him is like, oh, do you have any kind of, we need proper lights. Yeah. Like, I, want, I want a soft box. I'm like, what's a soft box? What's a soft box? <laughs> yeah, and let me know if we need to pull the grid. If it shows up in the shot, like the scan gets funky. Uh, that should be just fine. Sick. Because <clears throat> he want to do it outside. I'm like, well, if it's overcast, sure. Yeah. The last client I had, it was, um, I was working on uh, suppressors. Okay. And so like, it's just a smooth black surface. I'm like, okay, how am I supposed to light this to get to show the contours and make it look nice? Yeah. And, you know, yep. neutral lighting too, so. Yup. It's a lot of like edge lighting to mm -hmm. hit the lines and stuff, right? I always start with the basics. I mean, it's funny because every time I start lighting something, I think like, 
All right, I mean, it got crazy in the end. I just ended up with a key fill and rim. Yep. It's like 90% like, of That's all you need. It that's is. all you need. It's... And now, do you just need to do one side and then you could flip and mirror it in yeah, for the other side, I essentially? Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's give it a whirl and see what we got. came out really clean. So we'll save that one and then what we'll do is we'll we'll start from about here and then continue to the front and then you can just layer these on top of each other and keep appending to it. And then the more data you give it then it just layers it all together and then it can refine the surface. Sick. But even that right there, if I were to pull a model from that and save it, I'd be stoked. And then I could even just by eye do the rest of it and line that up. So Damn. That's, that's why we need someone that knows what he's doing. That's really clean. Yeah. That's so Again, you do you do everything wrong enough times. Yeah.